From 2012 to 2021, with the exception of 2020, Major League Baseball experienced in its playoffs something new and something different, the wild card game era. This came after, for many previous years, the wild card just being automatically awarded to the fourth best record in the respective league without any games being played. But as we said, in 2012, they decided to spice it up with the fourth and fifth best records in the respective leagues being pitted against each other in a one game winner take all showdown for the final playoff spot. Again, this went from 2012 to 2021 and there's some duds, there's some good ones and there's some absolute classics in here from both of the respective leagues. Now, I won the coin toss, so I got to choose whichever league I wanted to represent, as we're gonna go year by year alternating, and I chose the National League. So we are going to dive right in, starting off in 2012 with the very first wild card game ever played between the St. Louis Cardinals, our St. Louis Cardinals, mind you, and the Atlanta Braves. So the cards at this point were the defending champs, and they actually kind yep. of regressed under first year manager Mike Matheny. They went 88 and 74 um, and Albert Pujols was gone, but they were still a solid team. This was still a fun team to watch. Yeah, they still had most of their pieces from 2011. Uh, although I believe this year Chris Carpenter had gone down with an elbow injury that basically ended the rest yeah. of his career, if I remember correctly. I think he did pitch some games this year, but I don't think he, I think after this year, like he said he was going to pitch in 2013, but he just never did. And he just like retired, which is kind of what Adam Wainwright probably should have done, but we're not going to get into that yet. Yeah, he, I remember Pujols and Carpenter were like the big ones because Carpenter had, yeah, he did something with his elbow not tommy john but he like blew out his elbow and then he pitched like five games all year so he wasn't really he wasn't really a factor in this one but other than that pretty much the same people same go around still a solid team new manager but i mean everything was looking good this was played at the Braves Stadium at the time. I can't remember if this was... Um, Turner Field. Was it Turner Field at this point? Because I know it's been yes. like three names yes, in the was. last 25 years. I so, believe yeah. it was Turner Field. This was Turner Field. Oh, and I forgot this year that they had gotten Carlos Beltran, the Cardinals did. And that was a right. huge acquisition. I always forget... I always think that they that 2013 was like the Carlos Beltran Cardinals year, but I always forget that he was technically in the 2012 team. Probably because I didn't really watch the 2012 season. I just really started with the 2013 season. But yeah, Carlos Beltran was here. Not um, allegedly being a cheater yet. Not allegedly being a cheater yet. So this game, like we said, took place in Atlanta. And there are just some crowds in the mlb that i always feel like are way more intimidating during playoff games atlanta being one of them yeah others being like boston and like wrigley field and as much as i want to say that like our cardinals have an intimidating home crowd and whatever we really <laughs> don't we do have the best fans in baseball i'll say that but like atlanta and turner field was rocking this night especially because it was potentially chipper jones's final game and everyone wanted to be there to see Chipper Jones in his possible final game. Yeah, very true. Very true. I remember That's sort of a sort of a kind of a similar thing happened that happened with uh, last year's wild card series with uh, Yachty and Pujols. There was there was their last games. Yeah, you just had the you had the hype there. I remember I actually was not sitting down watching this game. I remember constantly asking my dad about this because we were at a party for someone in our church who was moving away and my dad and I kept sneaking off to watch and try and get the score of the game so I don't remember actually watching this game fully through until after um, but I remember a couple moments I remember baby Jason Hayward who was in like his first or second season at this point before he went and did absolutely nothing on the Cardinals then won a ring with the Cubs the next year um, but I remember him robbing Yachty in this game i remember watching that and then i remember cody yep. ross of all people hitting a home run and cody ross looked old in 2012 even more so than <laughs> he did in 2016 but he looked old then so good for the cubs manager there um i think that this game though ultimately it was a like it was a fine game both pitchers did fine they gave up some runs and all that but 
it's always going to be known as the infield fly rule game. The this infield fly rule, baby. Let's infamous. go. This is probably, other than any home plate or any game where Angel Hernandez is behind home plate, this is like the most infamous call or one of the most infamous calls of this century in baseball. The infield fly should not have been an infield fly as much as it pains me to say it. Definitely the dude, not. The dude, Pete Cosmo. It was Cosmo, like halfway through the outfield. It was what, Pete Cosmo is the shortstop? Yeah, it was Cardinals. Pete Cosmo. He was like 35 feet into left field and they called the infield fly rule when it dropped. The outfield umpire called it. I forget who was on the call that day. Like, it was so bad, and you'll see it on screen too. It's not an infield fly rule. One whatsoever. of the few times the outfield umpire actually did something. Yeah, and it just completely tainted the game, unfortunately. Uh, this led to, I think it was like a 20 plus minute delay. I remember my dad and I were looking on ESPN trying to wonder why the scoreboard yeah. was just stuck. Um, but people threw stuff onto the field. I believe the Braves manager pr tried to put the game under protest, but it just, you know, doesn't work because yeah. those never work. They, yeah, protest was attempted. I do remember uh, reading about that. But yes, this was the infield fly rule game. And this was the bottom of the eighth two when this happened. And the Braves, yeah. I almost said the Royals there. The Braves were threatening too. It was six to three by this point with the Cardinals. But they, yeah, yeah, it, and like the bases were loaded. It just completely ruined. Or were the bases loaded? Uh, either the bases were, there were runners on, is what we mean to say. Yeah, runners. And then on. yeah, there was lots of stuff thrown onto the field there. It was like a twenty-plus minute delay, but yeah, it completely just ruined this first wild card game's legacy. Um, Chipper Jones did actually single in his final at bat. His old bones did make it to first base. It was close though. But Cardinals closer Jason Mott iced the game in 6-3. Uh, very excited about that as a Cardinals fan because I thought we were going to lose. Then the Cardinals go to the NLDS, play one of the best NLDS ever against the Nationals, win that. Uh, go up 3-1 against the Giants and the NLCS. And then we all know what happens in Game 7 of that game. So we don't really speak of that because that was terrible and awful to watch. And I remember I cried the entire time. Yeah, that was not good, and yeah, not really a good place to start for wild card games because you know, like if you have, or if you're having a game like that where it's delayed 20 minutes because of a blatantly awful call. terrible call. <laughs> Although I will say one thing about this, I do like the um, under the under underrated um, Cardinals hats here. I really like the navy blue ones. The navy blue. Oh, and this also was one of the last few years of the TBS scoreboard. This is like the yep. best scoreboard. For it will sport. reappear. It will reappear next year. Okay. And I believe the year after, maybe. Okay. I can't remember what year they phased it out, but this is the best scoreboard UI easily. I want this back. Come on, TBS. Bring it back. So yeah, it was, the game was fine. It was exciting and it was notable, but it wasn't really anything special. You know, so, there was that thing. That was the NL wild card game. Moving on over to the AL wild card game. Right. So we got yeah, return of the TBS scoreboard here. It was the Baltimore Orioles versus the Texas Rangers, which I believe no, this was not the ball, the Orioles last playoff appearance uh until present because they reappear later, but yeah, the Orioles and the Rangers. Rangers coming off a AL pennant and almost winning the World Series twice. So we were at Rangers Ballpark in Arlington, I believe that's what it was called. Um, uh, yeah, I think it was just called Rangers Ballpark at that point. Yeah, so we got Ron Tellum Wash, Washington. We already made that joke, but he's still their manager versus the current wallowing in Mets, uh, Buck Showalter for the uh, Orioles. Um, if I remember correctly, the... Uh, Rangers this year, a lot like um, the Cardinals, they retained pretty much everyone else uh, from the World Series roster the year before. Had Josh Hamilton left for the Angels yet? Not sure. I'm going to have to look this up and edit it in. But... Um, oh, wait, no. This is 2012. Wasn't this the year that he hit four home runs in one game? Also what? possibly against Baltimore. Not in this game in particular. Okay. Maybe I'm, I'll have to look this up, but um, yeah, it was pretty low scoring till like the uh, till the sixth. There was one run each. Then 
Baltimore got some runs. Oh yeah, remember Chris Davis? He was in this game. Remember when he was oh, good? Is that baby Manny Machado? Yes, it is. Oh my goodness. Baby Manny Machado. So yeah, this is when Orioles, the Orioles were somewhat respected up until now, of course, when they're like one of the best teams in baseball as of we were when we were recording this. But up until this year, they've been kind of not good. But they were pretty okay this year. Um, like early 2010s Orioles were, they were a very respectable, like first round exit playoff team. Good, but not anywhere, like going anywhere great. I do like the, uh, the O's hats though. I think I actually prefer that to their regular hats, but yeah, the Rangers bullpen didn't do anything helpful because they ended up, uh, Texas did threaten in the ninth inning with bases loaded, but they didn't do anything. The Rangers bullpen kind of let them down. So they lost five, one. Not very exciting compared to the NL game because there wasn't a big controversy, but Fun fact you know. about this game, I actually possess the baseball card commemorating the wild card win, the Orioles and the AL's first wild card game. It just came in a random pack. I was fishing through my baseball cards the other day, and I found this one, and I was like, oh, this will be helpful for the video, so we'll edit in a video of me showing off the card but i was like oh yeah this was a thing that happened but yeah nothing yeah. nothing really crazy with this game you darvish oh, started this game gave up two earned i was runs. gonna say you darvish pitched this game for texas yeah State, didn't he? yeah he did that's that's pretty interesting but yeah orioles went on to what lose in the nl or the alds i think so yeah because they what it would it would have been the tigers did they lose to the tigers uh yes i believe it was the tigers anyways maybe the a's it was the tigers or the a's, the that they a's. Lost, but i think it's the tigers yeah so it was, it was so memorable that we don't remember i mean it's the al it's the league we pay less attention to but still it wasn't that exciting so it's kind of like a it's like a c-tier game nothing too exciting nothing two errors weird, from each side that's pretty interesting but moving on to the next year so we have 2013 nl wild card game and i want to ask you this question remember when the nl central was like a good division <laughs> the st louis cardinals this year won the division but then the second and third best records in the national league that year were held by the pirates and the reds respectively so because the cardinals won the division the reds and the pirates had to face off in the wild card game this took place at PNC Park, and everybody knows this game as the Cueto game because in the second inning, Pirates fans are ch chanting Cueto because Johnny Cueto's pitching, and he drops the ball, and then on the very next pitch, Russell Martin cranks a home run. And honestly, I don't know if PNC Park has been this full before or since. Like, PNC yeah. was rocking that night. Yeah. That moment was directly inserted promptly into Pittsburgh sports lore. Yeah, it was a that was a pretty big deal because like after that it was pretty much all over from then because the Reds got like what one two runs and the Pirates got like six. Yeah. Oh, they got two. The like, only, Reds got two runs. Yeah. The only good thing I think that the Reds did in this game was uh, Todd Frazier had a really good catch where he. I think he like fell into the pirates dugout or something yeah he did uh, yeah but other than that there wasn't anything notable i think russell martin hit a second home run in this game if i remember correctly as well uh but Sounds yeah after right. the Cueto moment it was all it was over. over it was bucktober had taken over and then bucktober got immediately <laughs> bucktober ended immediately after five games when adam wainwright for the cardinals threw a complete game shutout on them pretty good nlds for 2013 for the Pirates. Very I mean, true. Lost, and this, but... Even though the Pirates would be back, quote unquote, spoiler alert, this was the best Pirates season. This was the most back the century. Pirates have ever been. And they were they were a good team too. They were a really good team. They just weren't quite there yet. They weren't quite there. I did go to personal fact it did go to game two of the 2013 nlds uh the pirates did win that game by quite a lot actually so at least they got that 
Um, but yeah, it was a pretty good game. I mean, just for, for Pittsburgh sports lore, I guess. Not really a close game, but... Not really anything good for, like, baseball, but for Pittsburgh, that was, like, the best baseball moment in probably since they won the World Series the last time. Right. And then you want to talk about, like, nothing special by any means. You got the the 2013 AL wildcard game. Uh, I mean, it was a... Uh, who was even in this game? It was I the, don't even remember It this. was the then Cleveland Indians versus the Tampa Bay Rays. It was a shutout. <laughs> funny, funny uh, thing. Cleveland got nine hits, no runs. Wow. Um, yeah, so I guess that's pretty interesting. But where um, were they? Were they in Cleveland? They too? were in Cleveland. Yeah. Oh boy. Nine, nine hits, no runs. It was Alex Cobb versus Danny Salazar. So the Rays got three. They just got three runs. But it was in terms of managerial clashes. It was Joe Madden versus Terry Francona, which like. That's 20, 2016 foreshadowing, but Delman Young got a home run in the... Uh, they got a few more runs in the fourth, and that was pretty much it for this game. Pretty if, lights out from then on. If I remember correctly, the Rays this year, they had Ben Zobrist and David Price and I think a young Evan Longoria, but they didn't have really anything else. And I don't know if Cleveland had anyone that was near like 2016 or was a major contributor like these two teams were nothings and if i remember correctly tampa got bounced in the very next round by detroit also yeah because who did the who did the red sox play they played detroit um, the red the sox yes that year who did they play in the nl or in the alds the red sox uh it might have been Tampa. Or not Tampa. Or yeah, Tampa. Who it won the Central Tampa. that year? Was it the... Cleveland. Or no. No, they yeah. didn't. No, they wouldn't have. No, uh, Detroit would have. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. So who won the who won the West? The AL West? Probably the A's? Hmm. Oh yeah, because this is back when the A's were good. Um, Probably the A's. We'll so, yeah, put I don't, this up on screen. Yeah, t- Tampa Later. didn't make it. Tampa didn't make it too far past this, unfortunately, which seems to be a, a common trend here. Except for so the Cardinals made it past the next round, but everyone else pretty much got bounced immediately. And then we've got our next game. So we have the 2014 wild card. And you know back what this in Pittsburgh. means? It's, we're back in Pittsburgh, but it's an even year in the 2010s. So oh, it's no. Giants time. It's, it's the Giants 88 time. and 74 Giants versus the 88 and 74 Pirates at PNC Park. And we've got Madison Bumgarner starting on the peak of his powers. Oh, boy. Edison Volquez, who was good. He was good that year. But literally playoff Madison Bumgarner. Um, and yeah, the Pirates got absolutely Bumgarnered this game. I mean, they got wrecked. And Volquez Yeah, they got crushed. Fine. There was a grand slam by uh Grand Slam by Brandon Crawford. <laughs> Brandon Crawford, a dude who in his like 13 year career, I think, has maybe 175 home runs and has like a career 250 average. Hit a grand slam. Not a and power hitter. Is- yeah, it was all gone from there. Also, fun fact, did you know Brandon Crawford was on an episode of the Disney Channel TV show Live and Maddie? Just like randomly. Huh. Sure. He was why one not? of the characters' favorite one of the characters was from California and it was his favorite player. And he was just on an episode and I remember seeing it being like, Oh, that's uh that's that's dude. That's that's Brandon Crawford. It's guy from game. Guy from yeah. team. Always been a big Brandon Crawford fan, though. He's been the one staple of the Giants of the last 15 years. So, yeah. good player. Ever since, yeah, you know, the... Buster Posey left, I guess, yeah. Pirates went absolutely nowhere. They got crushed. Bum they Garner got crushed. The, the first nine of his legendary however many innings. You'll have to put that on screen. Uh, yeah. That postseason. There was not a single chance. 
Giants won 8 0. They got mad bummed. And then, then the Giants beat the, go and become. They beat the Cardinals the in the world. NLCS. Again, the Cardinals got Ishikawa, but they go they all got the way Ishikawa. to the World Series and win in Game 7 for its legendary Game 7 performance by who else? And they become the first wild card team to win the World Series in this the new wild card game era. team. Yeah. Or wild card game team. Yeah. Yeah. In yeah. the new wild card era. Yeah. 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 So first first success here. Yeah. It was. And coincidentally, it was not even close. they were facing the other wild card team that year. Oh, yeah. Would you look at that? Good old Royals. Yep. So 2014 AL wildcard was the Royals versus the A's, which like you want to talk about a throwback. If you look at the standings now, these are the two worst teams in all of baseball. But would you believe at one time they were actually good at playing without a large payroll? Because this game, this is a classic game right here. Because we got, so it was at Kansas City. So that would have been what? The first playoff game in Kansas City since... 19 would it would it have been since 1985 uh i believe it was like, we would have i to don't think on that but i think so i don't think they got they they got that many wild card ber- or many postseason berths at all ever since no. they won it in 1980 1985 and this might have been the first playoff game in kaufman stadium as well no, because no, believe- because remember we talked about this. It was um, it, the stadium that the Royals have always played in Kauffman Stadium. It just wasn't always called Kauffman Stadium. It was called something else, but it was oh, the same place. Right. It was it same had just place in the middle of nowhere redone. with the Royals scoreboard with the crown on it. Been to that stadium. Very nice stadium. Very deep outfield. And they have a giant, yeah, or they the used to, but Kauffman they have a giant sign that says High V over it. And if you're Love not high the Midwest, big you won't fan, what that is, but do they have a Menards uh, sign somewhere? That's another Midwest uh, inside joke. Unfortunately, I don't I hope they think do. they have a Menards one, but I do know a large high V sign exists out there. Yes, definitely. But anyway, back to the game. So Oakland took a pretty commanding lead here. Yeah, it was like yeah seven to three going into the um, going into the eighth, and then. They they were they did the Royals thing. They rallied. They had a bunch of small ball. They stole bases. You know, Royal ball stuff. Then the bottom of the ninth, they tied it. weren't able to walk it off then. But then in the um, when they were threatened in the twelfth inning, they were able to pull through. They tied it and then they won it with a I believe it was a walk off sack fly. I think. Or was it a double down the line? Was it a sack fly to tie it and then a double down the line? Right. Yeah, it was a double down the line. You're right. I'm, I must be thinking of something else. But yeah, the Royals, big comeback, big win, big, great game. It was... <laughs> Whatever happened to Ned Yost, my manager of the Royals this year? Does he? How long did he last? Did he last uh, until Matheny took over? He, uh, then, he might have, because I know before the Royals, he managed the Brewers. But yeah, this Royals team, they were a good team. Like the Royal Ball... There's tons of videos out there on this and on this game. Like this game was an absolute classic and the best one we've done so far. But this Royals team, honestly, they could have won that World Series if they didn't get bum garnered, and they totally deserved to win the second one. Because if they if they sent if they actually sent that guy at third, I can't remember who it was. Yeah, it was Alex, Alex Gordon. Yeah, if they sent him, they could have tied it. I think because I don't know if the the throw could have missed. They could have missed trying to throw home. They, Lots yeah. of things could have happened, but they, they just like they popped out in foul ground. It's like the lamest possible way to lose they anything. Should have, they should have <laughs> a foul them. out because they had a good they had a good roster those two years as well. Like this roster, they had guys like Salvador Perez, they had Alcides Escobar, they had Alex Gordon, they had Eric Hosmer, they had my personal favorite growing up for literally no reason, Billy Butler, who was an All Star at <laughs> one point. Thank you very much. I think they had what was that Japanese guy? It was like Nori Aoki or something like that. Um who was also like a real big stud. But they had a great lineup for those two years. This was a good Royals team. Just a shame that they ran into, you know, an even year in the 2010s Giants team. 
Yeah, although this was their um, their most recent title, the Giants is. That is true. Doesn't mean they didn't threaten though. Yeah. Moving on, so we've got 2015. The 2015. We are in PNC Park again somehow. The Pittsburgh Pirates are again in the wild card game after I believe again losing the division to the Cardinals. Uh, but this time, and also again playing a divisional opponent. Again playing a divisional opponent, but this time they're playing against the Cubs, and this was like when the Cubs were starting to get scary because all my life to this point, the Cubs were a footnote and then 2015 came around and it was like, oh, these guys are like serious and they are dangerous. This was also probably the last year that the NL Central was even remotely competitive. Um, Yeah. But the Pirates, they just ran into peak Jake Arrieta. Like the dude- Jake Arrieta moment. Also, we have uh, Kyle Schwarber taking Garrett Cole deep for a towering blast in the wildcard game. That'll uh, come up again later. Yeah, Jake Arrieta just was on top of the world at this point. His 2015, because uh, I think that was his Cy Young year. Yeah, that campaign yes. was crazy. There was no way Pittsburgh was going to do anything. And the Pirates got blanked yet again oh and there was a fight in the middle of this one too if i remember correctly. yeah <laughs> i don't uh it was like somebody hit something because this was back when pitchers bat shout out to the old national First league the oh. somebody hit yep. arietta during the game or whatever and arietta had thrown at a couple other people and then it just kind of went over so there was lots of pushing lots of shoving uh i don't know if anybody got ejected though or not anybody important if i remember but yeah, the Cubs yeah. won this game. Jake Arrieta totally carried them. Pirates just went completely off the cliff and into obscurity, and they still haven't come back. Um, at this point, can you please, in when you edit this, please put the clip of Javier Baez uh, against the Pirates in that base <laughs> clip. Let's put that. Yep. But the Cubs yes, I will. would go on to beat the 100-win Cardinals in the NLDS. I remember watching that one and being so upset because we were in the middle of moving houses and that was the Tragic. one thing I could watch during my downtime was the game, and we lost, and that Cardinals team was so good, and then they would eventually lose to the Mets in the NLCS. So this game Let's go Mets. was kind of a stinker if you're a Pirates fan, and it's a masterpiece if you're a Cubs fan, and if you like good pitching, this was a good game, and other than that, it was mid at best. It was fine. But yeah, we will no longer be seeing PNC Park or the Pittsburgh Pirates. Moving on, 2015 AL wildcard game. We have one of the many matchups between the Astros and Yankees. Yeah, gonna get, gonna give you uh, one guess to guess who wins this one. Have the Yankees ever beat the Astros in any in any postseason series ever? Since they moved back to the AL, I don't think so. So if you're a Yankees fan, you probably know this all too well. But yeah, three hit shutout for the Yankee uh, thrown by the Astros at Yankee Stadium, by which the way. Um, at Yankee Stadium, which like shout outs to the right field fence. But that could not save them. And was this was this a Rod's final full season? Because didn't he retire like in the middle I think of it the was one? Yeah, because he was definitely he does not appear in any playoff games after this, I don't believe. Yeah. And this Yankees team, didn't they also have like Carlos Beltran in like one of the last years of his career too, if I remember correctly? Possibly. I will have to do some post editing here, but yeah, this one wasn't that interesting if we're being honest. I mean, it was only combined what, like eight hits. So not a whole lot of action. Three, three nothing shut out by the Astros who would lose to the Royals in the ALDS. Yes. And so they didn't go too far after past that. This Yankees team had like no one because everyone from the 2009 campaign was gone. Jeter was gone. A-Rod was on his last legs. Judge wasn't here yet. So it was ba like notable Yankees included uh, Brett Gardner and that was about it. And then this was like the beginning of Masahiro Tanaka, like that two, three year stretch when he was the best pitcher in the AL, but he did not one thing. He just, he pitched ah. fine, but the Yankees couldn't help him out. 
Yankees lose this one. They will continue to lose to the Astros to the end of time. Not too interesting overall. So yes. I think we should just move on move to on. 2016. 2016 NL wildcard game. So it's another even year in the 2010s. So we all know who's coming back. Uh, we have the 87 and 75 Giants against the also 87 and 75 Mets. Uh, this game was played at City Field. And once again, the Giants sent out Mad Bum. Uh, but Mad Bum did have his match this time in a baby Noah Syndergaard. Baby Thor was on the baby. hill tonight. And Syndergaard actually was like, he was phenomenal in this game. He went seven scoreless and he had 10 Ks on two hits. I mean, he pitched a fantastic game. And I mean, he put the entire team on his back for this one because the Mets were not giving him help one bit. I mean, not that you can give much help considering you've got Mad Bum on the other side, but whatever. Mad Bum was just being Thanos. And this game would, is an, it's a classic example of like a game that is a lot closer than the scoreline would indicate because the game ended, um, what is it, like 4 nothing or something like that? Like three or four to nothing. Three nothing. But it was a lot closer than that. Yeah, three nothing. Juris Familia would come in for the Mets in the eighth, throw a good eighth, but in the ninth, our old pal B Crawl doubles in, and Angel Pagan walks, and then this dude named Connor Gillespie hit a three run homer over the right field wall, and that sealed the game, and we just never heard from this guy again. And then Mad Bum just shuts the door, just doing Mad Bum in the playoffs things. So it was a as he does. It was a good game. Like, pitching-wise, great game. And it was a lot closer than the scoreline indicated. But, you know, Giants just got it, took care of the Mets. I feel so bad for Noah Syndergaard because he did everything he could. Uh, but the Giants would yeah. lose to the eventual Cubs in four in the next round. The eventual uh, Cubs. And this was kind of the neutralizing of the Giants. They were they were kind of done after this point, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. Bring in their till like what 2021? Yeah, till 2021. But and then they still lost in the ALD and the NLDS. Their dominance was over, but not before Mad Bum just yet again pitched another fantastic game. So is this the last of playoff Mad Bum? I think this is the last that we'll of playoff see. Mad Bum that we'll see. Unfortunately. All right, moving on to the AL. We've got the Orioles are back. Yes, it's the Orioles versus the Blue Jays. This is a great one. This is a great one. And this one was played at the Rogers got... Center, too. So another mid-2000s yep. great playoff game, or 2010s playoff game I believe, played at Rogers Center. Yeah, I believe this was the year right after they decided to be like everyone else and make the infield uh, mostly dirt. They got rid of the little gaps in, be in, in between the bases uh, between 2015 and 2016, so... Oh yeah, I'd forgotten about that. Anyways, we do have a hearty dose of a bit of fan interference here in the in the seventh, but it didn't really affect anything. That's something interesting. But yeah, it was two two, so it was pretty close heading into. They went into extras, but then yeah, there was a walk off. We had a walk off home run in the eleventh, three run home run. So kind of a bit of overkill, but you know, oh, this was Edwin nothing Inco wrong with that. Owns one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember this. Yep. So that makes another iconic playoff home run at Rogers Center with the blaring horn after they after they hit the home run. Classic uh, Rogers Center moment. But yeah, Orioles, they were... They were fine. It wasn't... But this was the last we would ever yeah. see of them. Yeah, they weren't, they weren't going too far past un, until probably this postseason. But the Orioles were kind of in a downward spiral after this because the, after this, there was the... Um, the whole deal with paying Chris Davis millions of dollars to go 0 for 54 and stuff like that. They just, they kind of fell apart after this year. And the Blue Jays were a, they were a good team in the mid 2010s. They're usually pretty but good. But they just, they couldn't get over the hump, unfortunately. And so. They like, yeah, they, they, they hardly ever made a LCS and when they do, they lose. I think they lost. So. Uh, they lost to like uh, Texas. No, or did they beat Texas they in didn't. the next round? I think they might have beat. I think this was the year they made the they they made the LCS, but they lost to the they um, lost to Cleveland to the to yeah to the Spiders. 
the name redacted. So yeah, this one was pretty good. Any game that ends with a walk-off is automatically pretty good, especially in extras. It was tight the whole way through as well, but yeah. Moving on to the 2017 NL wildcard game. This, this one was a classic, and at first glance, it kind of doesn't look like it, but this game was great. This was between the Colorado Rockies and the Arizona Diamondbacks in that weird two-year stretch when they were both good. Uh, but this game, honestly, was just kind of a formality for who would get absolutely destroyed by the Dodgers in the next round because there was no way anybody was beating those Dodgers in the NL. There was no shot. Um, super fun, and neither of these teams had ever really been quite on this stage before, and they haven't really been since. Like, the Rockies went next year but it's or the next year but it's a little like it's different um so we're in we're in the diamondback stadium uh, i can't remember is that chase field chase field chase field that's right yes chase field and it was looking like a blowout at first uh the diamondbacks just jumped all over the rockies pitcher i can't remember who that was but i know zach granke pitched for the diamondbacks this game um it was like six nothing by the fourth um oh john gray john gray was yes. the guy who started for colorado um daniel descalso hit a home yeah. run shout outs to daniel descalso Former cardinal love him and then future cardinal and mvp paul goldschmidt hit a three-run home run in this game as well colorado just kind of out of nowhere took the wheels off of a great zach granke start and they jumped on him for four runs in the top of the fourth just like completely randomly um, and then this game had some notable fun because, you know, remember the old NL, please flash the clip of Bartolo Colon hitting the home run. Pitcher Archie Bradley hit a triple in the bottom of the seventh to drive in a run. And Chase Field has a really deep center field. Dude just hits a random triple to get a run and help put the Diamondbacks back on top because it was like 6-5 or something. It had gotten close. Um, and I believe, if I remember the statistic correctly... He was the first relief pitcher to ever triple in a playoff game. The sixth pitcher ever to triple in a playoff game. First relief pitcher to do so. Which I think that's super <laughs> funny. And it's just, just one of those, like, you know, wholesome old NL moments. Um, future Cardinal Nolan Arenado got a home run later in the eighth, I think. Uh, and so did Trevor Story. And I think that put them up. But then Arizona got three runs in the bottom of the ninth. And I'll... it did not put them up. They were down by one. Oh, were they? Still. Okay. Yeah. Never mind then. And then uh, Colorado got one, I think, in the ninth. But that was it. The game ended 11 to 8. Old Fernando Rodney closed this game out. This dude was still on a major league team at this point. This was like his 12th team or something. Um, <laughs> but I mean, this one was so fun. All the runs that were scored, the back and the fourth. The atmosphere. At, you got 30 combined hits. I know. The atmosphere at Chase Field was fantastic. Uh, and again, shame it was really only for the pride of getting beaten by the Dodgers in the next round. Because like this one, you're just you're playing for the bragging rights. Um, Arizona. It's the thought that counts. Yeah. Arizona got wrecked by the Dodgers. Then they would finish third in the division behind Colorado next season and miss the playoffs. Uh, and the only thing that was missing from this game, and the only thing that is missing from the Diamondbacks and Chase Stadium being the greatest stadium in the MLB, is a tank of live rattlesnakes. Because if Tampa Make it happen. can have a tank of live rays, there needs to be a tank of live rattlesnakes. So, Arizona, they had their little fun, but Colorado, on the other hand, they, they're going to bounce back, just you wait. But before we do that, we have to stop by the AL because we have to witness the Minnesota Twins in the playoffs, which if you know anything about the Minnesota Twins in the playoffs, you know they're not going anywhere. Not going anywhere in terms of the fact that they're going to lose. They led in this game, right? They, they did. They led 3 nothing in the first inning. 3 nothing in the first inning. Oh my. Then they immediately gave up they immediately gave up a home run because of course. Yep. Which, like, might have been a Yankee Stadium moment. It, it was pretty deep. I don't think it was necessarily a Yankee Stadium moment. It was it was 391 feet, so I think it was pretty respectable. But And these Yankees had bounced back from being, like, the 2015 Yankees. This was a good Yankees. They still had Brett Gardner, loved Brett Gardner. 
But Aaron Judge... Love, love Brett Gardner. Aaron Judge was on the scene now. They had, uh, what was it, uh, Didi Gregorius. They had Didi Gregorius on the scene there. Um, they had Gary Sanchez back when he was good. Um, the pit, the pitching was still helpful, and I don't know if they'd traded for Chase... Uh, not Chase Headley. They had Chase Headley. I don't know if they'd traded for DJ LeMahieu yet, but I think these guys had DJ LeMahieu, and he was like the AL batting champ. You'll have to check me on that one and put it in post, but I think that's who they had. We got an Aaron Judge home run as well. This was his first year. Yeah, this was this was the start of Judge. And then, yeah, if I remember correctly, the Yankees just kind of, they just kind of took the game away. There wasn't anything else. Yeah, it was 4-7, or 4-8 rather. Um, so it was, it was pretty close up until it wasn't. So, yeah, the Twins continue to um, lose in the playoffs. In other words, water's wet. And we got a rare playoff closing of a game from Aroldis Chapman. Who, this Um, was his first year on the Yankees, if I remember, because he didn't sign with the Cubs. Yeah, because he he was with the Reds. And and the Cubs, yeah. They were, the Yankees were going to try and make him the next Mariano Rivera, which... Worked for all of them. Good luck with that. One season. Although, fun fact, I did go to a game where I got to see Aroldis Chapman face Albert Pujols, and uh, he walked Ooh. Albert Pujols. So take that huh. take that as you will, but he walked Albert Pujols. Interesting. And now he's, as of recording this video, he's with, what, the Royals or something? The Rangers. Or the Rangers. He was with the Royals. Yeah, they traded. Years. The Royals traded... The Royals traded him to the Rangers because he was actually doing pretty good. And they're like, we can't have this. 2018. So yeah, we're in 2018. This game is probably one of the funniest but best circumstances of all the wild card games. So what happened this year is we had not one, but two game 163s. We had a game 163 to decide the NL West and a game 163 to decide the NL Central. The winners of those game 163s would be the division winners, but the losers, the way the records came out, would have to face each other in the wild card game. So the Rockies lost to the Dodgers in game 163, and the Cubs lost to the Brewers in game 163. And so they met up in Wrigley Field, I think, it. I don't think it was the next day, but I think it was like a day or two later for the wild card game and this game was crazy fun this was a nail-biting one you're in that already intimidating atmosphere that is playoff wrigley field like as much as i hate the cubs they have one of the best postseason atmospheres it's so intimidating there um Mm -hmm. this was kind of this game had post peak but still pretty good john lester versus uh kyle freeland I think he was good for a bit, but I don't know if he ever did anything. Um, the Rockies got one in the bottom of the first, and they should have had more, but there was like a weird ground rule double thing with the Ivy. Yeah, it went into the Ivy. And yeah. there was this whole like call. Wrigley Field moment. Of like the runners, like would he have advanced to first? or Would he have it, scored? It was a whole weird thing, but they kind of, the yeah. Rockies kind of got cheated out of a run. In this one, yeah, they, he definitely would have scored on that one. So it just ended up being one nothing. Um, yeah, it was a Nolan Arenado sack fly that got the one run. But they couldn't do anything else. I mean, John Lester went dominant in six innings, and a couple of things happened in this game that are kind of comparable. I don't know. I know that you don't watch a ton of football, but it's kind of comparable to how like the Brady era went in when he was on the Patriots like things would always just seem to go his way despite the fact that you know it wasn't that wasn't how it was the same thing with the Cubs here in this game all the calls seemed to go their way despite not um there was the double play instance where Daniel Murphy couldn't get the ball out of his glove to throw somebody out at second base I can't remember and they called they called him out at second base despite the fact he was clearly safe um and then later on in the game javier baez it's a ground ball and this is a smart play but this isn't like this isn't a play that should have happened they should have um discounted this 
but Javier Baez is between caught between second and third. And what he does on the ground out is he goes in front of Nolan Arenado and hugs him. And this is a live ball thing where Arenado is forced to tag yep. him, but the runner is given enough time to go over to the base. And I don't think you were able to actually do that, but they get away with it anyway. And there was, uh, oh, and there was like a catcher's interference call in this one too. That was also not catcher's interference. So yeah, a lot of calls that went the Cubs way, even though they shouldn't have. Um, I know Chicago, they got a run back late in the game to tie it 1-1. Yeah. I think that run came from uh, Terrence Gore, who is a dude, like one of the few dudes in baseball history who was brought specifically to run. Because I think at one point in his career, he had more career stolen bases than he did at bats. And I think he has... Sounds about right. I think he has two World Series rings as well, because I think he has one with the Cubs and one with, like, Atlanta or something like that. You'll have to huh. check me on that. Um, and yeah, I know, I've been, I know I've been talking a lot for this one, but this was... It was a good game despite some really, like, strange stuff happening. Yeah, it was was pretty solid. I mean, you got Rocktober moment, so like you can't get mad at that, but it was uh it was ended pretty early though. Rockies are not destined to do anything in the playoffs ever, but they did end up winning so, in the 13th. So they did. Yes, they did. This was a really just a good nail-biting fun game of baseball it really embodied that like winner take all vibe and yeah the rockies got swept by the brewers in the next round so didn't really matter didn't really hear from them since but it was cool to see this yep. especially because this was like the last crumbling of that cubs play or championship team and also the last instance of playoff nolan arenado till 2021 uh yes and also, like, random side note, but Alex Rodriguez was on the call for that game, and the manager for the Rockies is Bud Black. But Alex Rodriguez kept calling him Buddy Black throughout the whole thing. <laughs> and I don't know why, but it was really annoying and off-putting because it's Bud Black, not Buddy Black. Buddy Black's argument as he... And and I think Buddy that... Black has a great argument. It seems like Buddy Black... So, anyway... <laughs> On to 2019, but I just, I had to get that out. No, 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 not quite. We have to do the A's versus the Oh, my the bad, Yankees. my bad. A's versus Yankees, because you remember when the A's were a playoff team? I've already made that joke, but anyways. We're at Yankee Stadium again. We got, uh, we got, yeah, so they went up, they went up pr pretty early, the Yankees did. They went up 2-0 in the, um, in the first, because of, you know, Aaron Judge. He did his thing. He had home runs. We got Luis Severino for the um, for the Yankees. He was their starting pitcher. He was pretty good. Versus Lou Trevino for the A's. Two dudes with basically the same name. Yeah, I was thinking. I was thinking for a second. Am I like losing my mind or are these? No, like no. These are different people. But yeah, the Yankees. It wasn't really close. This one. And if I remember correctly. Didn't the A's try this like weird thing where they tried to make it a bullpen game and they just like they brought out yeah. a new pitcher every couple innings? Yeah, the A's do weird things as the A's do. Um, they did. Uh, they got two runs in the eighth because they got a home run from Chris Davis. No, not that Chris Davis. That Chris Davis with a K. But just in case you weren't sure, uh, the Yankees got another run the next inning, and it was pretty much over. So seven to two. Yeah, it was seven two. Not really close, but then the Yankees. I, they definitely didn't win the pennant because they haven't done that in a long time. But they didn't make it too far past here. I believe they lost um, to Houston. Twenty eighteen. Yeah, sounds about right. I think they lost to Houston, either that or Boston, because it was Houston and Boston in the LCS that year. But they did not go far again. Not a very interesting one. Speaking of not very interesting, but actually very interesting, we're moving on to 2019. So this is known as the Juan Soto had that one hit game. And this is kind of when Juan uh -huh. Soto like really burst onto the scene as like the superstar was this game. Um, and I would also Shout like to, to note the old Nationals uniforms that the Brewers bullpen uh, and this one bullpen in left field in Nationals Park has shrubs in it because like, why not? 
Sure. Max Scherzer started this game, and uh, <clears throat> playoff Max Scherzer, to be exact, started this game. So this means he gave up two home runs in the first two innings to let them go down by three, because we all know that playoff Scherzer, like playoff Kershaw, has to get bailed out by his teammates. Literally, like, he was terrible this game. Yeah. And the fact that he only got three, or like, he w only kept them to three runs is shocking. Definitely. Yeah. I know, like, Trey Turner hit a home run uh, into the shrubs, by the way, that I was mentioning. Yep. Uh, and then the Nationals just kind of couldn't do anything. Uh, I think Brandon Woodruff came into this game, and Brandon Woodruff, a good pitcher, still a good pitcher. Um, and Josh Hader did make an appearance as well. This is where all, like, the the famous stuff happens. We kind of have, uh, in the bottom of the eighth, we have what's a, like a Jermaine die situation from 2005. Oh, yeah. Because Hader goes high and inside with the fastball to, uh, uh, I think the dude's name is Michael A. Taylor. He goes high and inside, and it looks like he beans the dude on the hand. But And Taylor kind of sells it. But on further replay, what ends up happening is Taylor's choked up just enough to where the ball actually hits the knob of the bat. But they go to replay, and they give him first base anyway, despite the fact that it hit the bat first, and it should have been a foul ball. So this was yeah, another, been dead. like you can see right there that that hit the bat and they thought, you know, oh, maybe it hit his arm or whatever, but it, it hit the bat. So they kind of got away with that one. And that's also kind of how the Nationals were able to win this game was because Michael A. Taylor just kind of sold that call right there. Yeah, I mean, that was the that was a pretty big that was a game changing play. And I know that, you know, then they got sodoed. Poor dude in the outfield. I can't remember. Who. Oh, yeah, it was Trent Grisham. Before he went to the Padres, he missed the ball, then slipped. And, like, as cool as it was for the Nationals, you got to feel so bad for Grisham in that moment because he just completely blew it. Soto clears the bases, gets caught in a rundown. But, I mean, this was the Soto moment. Yep. I mean, it, and it was a pretty big, it was a momentum shifter for sure. Because they won this game four to three, and then they immediately, and then they played the Dodgers, I believe, in the NLDS this year. Correct? Yeah, shocked the Dodgers at home or in. They beat Dodgers the Dodgers. Then they swept the Cardinals and almost threw a no hitter like twice. That was absolutely upsetting to watch as a Cardinals fan. Yeah, especially coming off that great series with the Braves, it that was rough. That that hurt. And then, uh, and then they beat the Astros in the World Series, and they have been terrible ever since. They have been terrible ever since. But great story, start of the great story, great, great wild card game right there. No complaints for me. Now, here we are, um, the final fan populated playoff appearance of the Oakland Coliseum for the 2019 AL Wild Card game. Which, by the way. And I will not forget to show this. Mount Davis was open Mount for Davis this one. Was open. Okay. Yes, it was open. Unfortunately for the A's, they were they got some runners on in the first inning. They got them loaded. They didn't score any. And then the Rays just kind of kept adding on after the first inning. Because you know, this was back this was when the A's kind of had some good players. They didn't really do much. They kind of just left a lot of runners on. The A's did. And the Rays were the ones that capitalized mostly on the uh, scoring opportunities. And it ended... Yeah, it was 5-1 the final score. And this was... So the, it wasn't too close. This was the game. I remember we were talking about this, but this game had, like, a lot of future Braves players on it. Like, within the yeah. next year or two, Braves players on it. Yeah, the A's were basically just the Braves before the Braves. They were like the <laughs> Braves. As they form. weren't as good. Yeah, we'll put a list I mean, of all what, the players. Sean Murphy on here. Yeah, Charlie Morton. We'll put a list of all the players from this game who eventually became Braves within like the next year or two. But it's like more than uh -huh. five. Yeah, it's most of the current Braves players except for like Ronald Acuna Jr. and like a couple of other ones. 
Yeah, it's most of the current Braves uh, lineup. say i really do like the a's uniforms in this game because they weren't wearing their dark green uniforms that have a's on it they were wearing their uh -huh. light green ones that say oakland on them i love those uniforms and if they move to vegas i hope they don't change those i hope they just put vegas on it instead because those are great uniforms yeah they aren't bad but yeah and then the ray yeah but the rays ended up winning this one and then i believe they lost in the uh the next round yeah, they did to either New York. So it didn't or go Houston. too far past that. The only the only notable thing about this game was, as previously mentioned, Mount Davis was open. Yeah, that was about it. Really, not that great, honestly. It was fine, whatever. And the A's just kind of fell off a cliff from there. They no, they made the playoffs in 2020, but then they fell off a cliff. Okay, 2020 was they kind made of... the NLDS actually in 2020 somehow the ALDS. or not the nlds the alds why do i keep doing that but anyways speaking of 2020 that happened they had the wild card series which was best of three so we don't count that and then 2021 was the final year of the singular elimination wild card game so we got the 2021 nl wild card game and this game was <laughs> oh boy this game this game was a doozy so we have like the respectable 90 and 72 St. Louis Cardinals against the LA Dodgers. And for most people who don't know this season, like, oh, the Dodgers probably had a record somewhere in the 90s. You know, that's how they did that. Uh, no, they won 106 games that year and still were in the wild card. And the reason for this is because the Giants came out of freaking nowhere and won 107 games that year. So you have the 106 <laughs> win Dodgers playing in a one game elimination game to try and move on to face the 107 win Giants. It was so weird. And I mean, the the Dodgers were stacked this year, too, because they pulled off the midseason heist for Trey Turner and Max Scherzer. And I mean, they were already a good team. They had Mookie Betts, Justin Turner. They had uh, I think this was the last year of Corey Seager if I remember correctly, but he had been hurt. I mean... We've got a good playoff appearance by Max Scherzer, surprisingly. Surprisingly. I mean, the Cardinals were facing insurmountable odds. My friend uh, at school the day before, he told me that, you know, five bucks, which was generous, that the Dodgers win. And I was like, five bucks that the Cardinals win, because I just had a thought they could possibly do it. So it was... 40 like one year old Adam Wainwright or four yeah 40 year old Adam Wainwright against Max Scherzer because you know of course the Dodgers had Max Scherzer and playoff Max was not as present but he did give up a run in the first and what I remember about yep. watching this game is the Cardinals had a lot of chances and they could have won this game but they left a ton of runners on base like a ton yep We'll have to get the statistic for that, but every inning was like, oh my gosh, hit somebody in, please. Then yes, that's that's true. There was the uh, that cool uh, play by Adam Wainwright in the first inning where he caught the line drive. That was pretty cool. Oh yeah, that was that was super sweet. Um, I was a little afraid on that one because I thought like it was gonna hit Wayno and then he was gonna be out, but. No, he, he caught the ball, and I think it was like 105 off the bat or something like that. Then Sounds about right. Kept going from there. Uh, Justin Turner got a home run in the fourth to tie it, and it was at that point where I was kind of like, oh, no, like this is where the wheels are going <laughs> to come off. But St. Louis surprisingly held it together. We held it together that game, 
and we knocked Scherzer out early. We drove his pitch count up because he went only, uh, I think it was four and two thirds before he got relieved uh, by Joe Kelly, former Cardinal, by the way. And then, yeah, there was future few- White Sox and then future Dodger again, Joe Kelly. But yeah, it was 1-1 going into the ninth. Cardinals, they were trying so many times. They had so many runners on base this game. Couldn't get them in. And then at the end of the day, Alex Reyes just had to watch Chris Taylor fly the two-run home run over his head to walk it off in the bottom of the ninth. I was so upset, mostly because I lost $5, but also because the Cardinals really did have a shot at winning this game. Just couldn't get it. Yeah, because they were hot. They were hot the last... The- Second half of that season. Oh yeah, this yeah this like was really the hot. season they won twenty one of twenty two and won seventeen in a row. They were electric yep. in the season. Couldn't do anything about it, unfortunately. So, yeah. Unfortunate. And then they the Dodgers went on to beat the Giants controversially with the um, check swing strike three to end that series. Um, and I think Max Scherzer was on the mound for that. Sounds about right. Yeah, and that, then they lost to the to the Braves. But thus ended the 106 to 107 win NL West Crazy Town saga. Anyways, the final wild card game. The final the, wild card game. The AL wild card game, and of course, it's the Yankees versus Red Sox, because you know we're starting to see the uh, the dominance of the. Um, the AL East, because who won the division this year? Would it have been um, uh, the Rays? Yeah, I think it was Tampa that won the division this yeah. year. Yeah, yeah. Because so then we have the Yankees and the Red Sox, the two other best teams. Because you know, we know the AL Central's not doing anything; they're not getting any wild card teams. And then the AL, um, the AL West it's was also Astros. pretty. It was just the Astros show. So um, it was the East. To determine who else. Yeah, we got Garrett Cole for the Yankees, um, who, of course, surrendered a towering shot to Kyle Schwarber, as as is tradition at this point. So we all know if the um, if the Yankees play the Phillies in the World Series, um, and Garrett Cole is on the mound, Schwarber is bound to hit a towering home run. And I knew that Garrett but, Cole um, was going to be host in this game because, again, Boston in the playoffs, intimidating playoff atmosphere. And this was when they were cracking down on the substances, too, when Garrett Cole was, like, one of the the main, like, guys who kind of fell off from that. So mm-hmm. he just – he did not have his stuff on that. And I remember telling that same friend who I bet the Cardinals game on, he's a Red Sox fan. And I remember being like, as much as it pained uh-huh. me – to say this, but the Red Sox are going to win that game. Yeah. And they did. And if I remember correctly, this was the game where Giancarlo Stanton had like two hits that both went over or almost over the green monster that he thought were home runs, but weren't yeah. <laughs> had like two long singles. Then he did hit a home run, but it wasn't over the green monster. But yeah, yeah, that was interesting. Yankees had, but yeah, the Red Sox won this one, six to two. Yankees had poor pitching, poor hitting. They had wasn't this the game where they had that like weird base running mistake too? There was that like weird thing where they tried to send Aaron Judge or something, and it just yeah. did not work at all. Like it was terrible. Did not. Yeah. So the Yankees out early. Then they what? What? Who would they have lost to? The the Red Sox lost to the the Astros in the next round. I think so. Yeah. So thus ends the wild card game saga. The last game, not particularly interesting, but not really. What can you do? Because then in 2022, you move to the three game setup, you expand the playoffs, but it was a fun little era in baseball history. And it made it a lot more entertaining than just awarding the wild card to the fourth best record in the respective league. Uh huh. It it added a little more spice to it, so it had a good run. It really did. Yeah, and I think where we are now is fine, because you know, like best of three, technically is probably a better determination of which team is actually better. But 
the one and done nature of the uh, of the wild card game that lasted ten or so years. Fun little fun little experiment by would this have been Bud Selig that this I think Bud decision Selig's was under? It. Yep, yeah. Alan H. Bud Selig, our favorite person. And then Rob Manfred ended it, but also it was kind of time for it to come to a close because at this point in other major sports all the playoffs were starting to expand as well because the college football yeah. playoff, as of recording has not expanded yet, but it will. And this year was the first year of the talks of expansion. Uh, the world cup. There's the most... NBA, uh, NBA play in tournament as well. Yeah. The world that started a couple years ago. World cup for both men's and women's after 2022 and three will expand from 48 to 64 teams. If I remember correctly, um, mm -hmm. Uh, I think the hockey playoffs expanded within this time as well. Again, if I'm remembering... Yeah, they have the wild card round. So yeah, this was... Baseball kind of ended it at the right time because everyone else was expanding. And, you know, with just more playoffs is more fun and more chances for more teams. So, I mean, that's how the Phillies won the World Series in 2022 was thanks to the expanded playoff. They did not win the World Series. Or, sorry, <laughs> made it to the World Series. My apologies. They almost did. Well, almost not almost, did. but but how they they, they the did World pretty Series. good and defeated. They didn't make it to the World Series too. In the Padres, yeah, they beat the Cardinals. They beat the Padres. They beat the, the Cardinals the, series the, too. Yeah, that that was tragic. <laughs> That was tragic. They beat the Cardinals. They beat the Braves, who were... They had over 100 wins. Um, and then they beat the the Padres. They, of course, lost to the Astros. But, hey, what can you do? The expanded playoffs were good. But, yeah, this was a great little decade. We had some great little games here and there. Had some duds. Um, but it did produce a couple of World Series winners and a couple of iconic playoff runs and all that. And some iconic and also less iconic <laughs> Atlanta moments <laughs> but yeah thank you for joining us on this examination exploration journey through every single wild card game in the wild card game era in major league baseball if you enjoyed this video like comment share subscribe you know all those things cue the outro